Welcome back to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and thanks for joining me for another Wonder Round Paradise. We are here, of course, to talk about four more games to go, another one ticked off the list. We're going to hear from now until the end of the season all the cliches regarding it's just the three points that counts and one game at a time we're going to hear all of that. And no, no doubt um, that is true. Uh, when you look at yesterday's game, and uh, the, the clock is ticking down. You're just hoping for the final whistle so we can get back down the road with the three points. Not a vintage Celtic performance. But we got the win and that's all that's that's all that matters. Brendan Rodgers talking about that after the game. He's not really focusing on the performance. Obviously, he'll work on that all week uh, with the players. They'll analyse the game and where we could do better. And we will as well because we talk about it every single day. But the positive thing is we won the game. There's only four to go. Four wins and Celtic win the league. I think I've parked the Scottish Cup final at the moment. We'll come back to that once the league action is over. So we'll be looking today at what went well and what can we improve on in the remaining league fixtures. And we've got to start off by talking about James A. Forrest. James, who is in his testimonial year, seems a while ago that the testimonial game was played up here at Celtic Park. He's in his 15th season at the football club. He's scored in every single one of those seasons, which is a record. He's uh, hurtling towards 500 appearances for Celtic. Only 12 players in the history of the club have made 500 competitive appearances. He's scored over 100 goals. He's had over 100 assists. And if we win the double this season, and fingers crossed that we do, obviously, he will be second only to Bobby Lennox as the most decorated Celtic player when it comes to honours won at the football club. But this season, he's been a bit part player. He hasn't started a game since November. And going into the match, we were talking about who replaces Dyson Maeda because Yang didn't have his best performance against Aberdeen last week. And when Palmer came on, um, it was Palmer that gave away possession for Aberdeen to equalise near the end of that game. James Forrest got the nod and he took the opportunity with some style. So James Forrest gets the call for left wing and we played with Nicholas Kuhn on the right. I think most of the Axon contributors certainly uh, were looking for Kuhn to start the game and I thought he started off brightly. Uh, got a few shots in and in the first 10 minutes Celtic were dominant. Five shots at goal and it looked as though we were going to be able to turn the screw on a team that we had already beaten three times this season. This is a Dundee side who had taken something off every other team in the league except Celtic. They were promoted at the beginning, obviously, the end of last season. And this is their first season back in the Premiership. And they get a top six position. I think they've done so, so well. So we knew it wouldn't be easy. But all the focus was on James Forrest because Dundee came back into the game. And they were actually dominating us when James scored the goal. Great move between Hatate and Kyogo. I think Kyogo's control up and down a wee bit. But the beneficiary was James Forrest. He takes it first time. What a finish that was by James A and you're looking at that thinking sometimes you need that experience, sometimes you need that winning mentality. Uh, we've got a, a group of players there who have not enjoyed success at Celtic, all the new recruits and James A Forrest was showing the way what a role model he is. So Celtic went into the break, one nothing up, but it wasn't a really dominant first half and we were hoping that Celtic could come out the second half and um, increase the score and that's exactly what they did and it was that man again James A. Forrest, who made it 2-0. I think he'd done really well to win the ball. And then, of course, Rio Atati played him through. He got a wee break of the ball. It was a great finish, actually, with James A. Forrest on the left foot. And you're looking at it at that stage thinking, that's great. Let's extend the lead. Let's get another goal. Well, let's push on. But Dundee came back at us. And it's at that point that it's a real test of the character of the Celtic side. And Brendan Rodgers said, as long as we get the win and get back down the road, that was all that was important. I've said in previous weeks that I think Celtic need to score three goals a game to get this over the line and it looked like that was the case yesterday again because we've gone two goals up and we've conceded and that is something that we really need to improve on. We're doing it with the personnel that we have available to us. Dundee again done exactly what Aberdeen done last week and they targeted that left-hand side, the crosses to the back post. We saw it in the first half, we saw it in the 93rd minute after, of course, Dundee had already pulled a goal back, which was an unfortunate one to lose. An OG by Adam Eda. I don't think he could do much about it. I was more critical of Hatati pulling out of the challenge. Maybe he was scared that he was going to give away a penalty, but he should have won the first ball. 
It ricochets off Ida and it's 2-1 and it starts to get nervy for Celtic at that stage. But we need to do better with these balls going into the, the back post on the left-hand side. Teams are targeting us now. We're not dealing with them. Um, had Mellon got a better connection on that header or headed it across the face of goal, 93rd minute, there's no coming back from that. So that was a warning for Celtic and it's something we really need to improve on. I do not think that Brendan Rodgers is going to change the defence. We're going to run with that five that started at the weekend if they're all fit. And I would say the same about the midfield, but I thought the midfield were really weak at the weekend. And I know that Hatati and McGregor are still coming back to full fitness. Matt O'Reilly seems to be doing a lot of extra work and then he himself is tired near the end of games as well. They are the three best midfield players we've got at the football club. Hopefully the 95 minutes Hatati's got in his legs, the 60 minutes McGregor's got in his legs will benefit us as we go into the Hearts game. But all credit to Tomoki Awata when he came on, I think he gave us a bit of physicality. He gave us a, a wee bit of insurance, you know, he was breaking up attacks and that's what he does. He's a very, very good backup um, on the bench for Brendan Rodgers. But it, these are the things we need to improve on moving into the final four league games. Four games to go and Celtic have got it all in their own hands. We're three points ahead of the main challengers who seem to struggle a wee bit against St Mirren by all accounts and we move on to our match here against Hearts and I think the home advantage that Celtic have for the majority of the remaining fixtures will be pivotal as well. It'll be great if we can get into the rhythm. Brendan Rodgers spoke about playing on that pitch there at Celtic Park and how that suits our style of play as well. And what else has Axon been up to? Well, last week we were privileged to share a stage with the blessed Martin O'Neill. He was phenomenal at Barra's Art and Design for the sell-out uh, event and we were able to raise £1,000 as well for wee Jamie Tierney. So if you want to contribute or read a wee bit more about wee Jamie's story, please click on the link underneath this video. We're also at Dunoon in three weeks' time, 17th of May, with Joe Miller and Peter Grant. A few tickets left for that one as well. Come along and join us in Dunoon. It'll be a cracking night with the Centenary Boys. Um, but until next time, join us tomorrow at 12.30 on a Celtic State of Mind. Thank you.